Hi guys, I published a video yesterday with this motherboard. So this is the Z270-A Pro MSI motherboard that powers on, but basically just get a error LED lit up, a white LED that lights up now, which says a CPU error. So during the video, I actually removed the BIOS chip twice as it so happens and reprogrammed it. And a little resistor got stuck between two pins of the chip. I wasn't sure where it had come from. I looked back on the video and said, well, it doesn't come from around here. But in fact, it did. Somebody with sharper eyes than me when I had another look. So what happened on the previous video is the resistor from here got dislodged. And that must be what was stuck on my soldering iron and ended up effectively tagged across these two pins. So I took that off and I put it safe up just on top of my Quick 861 where I thought it would be safe. Uh, but also I've been rearranging my workbench as well and it's gone missing basically this little resistor. I'll just show you what I have been doing out of interest. So this is my workbench now and you can see I've actually put some shelving behind. Okay which I moved from the other side of the workshop. So some of my soldering equipment is up there. That thing that says one way, that is the machine I fixed a couple of videos ago, the little ITX machine, i5 7th gen. That's going to be part of the upgraded recording system with some more equipment on there when it arrives. So you can see I've moved everything, yeah. Just water there that I used to wet the sponge on the soldering iron. All of my oscilloscopes and there's the quick and basically during rearranging and moving stuff around the resistor went missing so that's what i have now i have more room on my bench you can see i've moved a few things around i've swapped the variac and the other scope and i think it's much better just to the other side of me this is where i keep my multimeters the mixing recording system you can see there the capture card i have i have another one coming and so on. So that's how I literally have the uh, bench set up now. Be interested to see how that compares with what you guys have. Okay. But back to the problem in hand. What are we going to do about this missing resistor? So the part that's gone missing looked like a resistor. It was a greyish colour. Could have been a capacitor, but it looked like one of these type of resistors to me. Another one there, there. Okay, and one there, it's actually there just under the gunge. So I think it's one of those, but probably not the same value. Didn't see any reason why it should be. One end of the resistor actually goes to, I'll just get rid of the glare a little bit, you might see. Okay, that might help. One end of the resistor goes to this pin here. Okay, and then the other one kind of goes off up into here somewhere, JSP11, okay? Now, it's near to pin 3, and I think that's where it actually connects to. The other end here looks like it goes to that point. Now, this wasn't fitted, the, the other one. And that goes off underneath this somewhere. It actually goes there. Okay. So JSPI1. I think this is like a programming interface to be quite honest. But it could go to somewhere else as well. Let's have a look at the data sheet and see what pin 3 is on this chip. So here is the data sheet and we can see that pin 3 is SIO2 which according to the description is a serial data input and output for four times io read mode okay and then there's an sio1 which is for two times or four times read mode so this is effectively where data goes in and out of the chip if it's used in this mode i have no idea which mode this is okay but that's what it actually is so we know basically where it connects to now the missing resistor is going to be one of three things really because i can't think of a fourth thing it could be so it's either going to be a pull up resistor connected to 
a supply rail. I don't know which supply rail, but I'm sure it's the same one that supplies this chip. It's either 3.3 or 1.8. So this end, if it connects to pin eight, it's a pull up resistor. If it connects to pin four, that's ground, it's a pull down resistor. So let's have a look to see whether it does actually connect there. Okay, so. From the other end here, does it go to pin eight? No, it doesn't go to pin eight. I'll just go to resistance mode. Is there any resistance to pin eight? Well, it's quite high. Thinking about it, if pin eight is supply, which it is, then that would be the positive end if it was coming through a diode or something. No, it just reads like a resistance and a high resistance at that. I can go to diode mode, but I don't think it would be a diode here. I like. No reason why there should be. No. So it's not a pull up resistor. This is a pull down resistor. Well, we put the positive end to the, where the component is here. And this is ground. And again, it's not a pull down resistor. What is it? Let me have a look. I may be shorting there. So, end of the resistor, ground. No, I was just crossing my wires like Ghostbusters, yeah? Don't let the beams cross. <laughs> okay. So, it's not a pull up or a pull down because this end of the resistor doesn't go to either VCC or ground. So, the only other thing it can be is in series with the data, yeah? If it's in series with the data, it's likely to be a fairly low value resistor. So if it was a pull up or a pull down on this sort of circuit, I would probably stick a 10K in there. I think that's a reasonable value. If it's a series resistor like this, I'm going to put something fairly low, 22 ohms, something like that. So that's what I'm actually going to fit there, 22 ohm resistor. And then let's see if that makes any difference. The reason I'm taking an educated guess on this is because I don't have a schematic or a board view for this motherboard. I can get one on one of the pay sites. It was about 10 euros. I've asked on Badcap, see if anybody has one. If so, maybe somebody will reply. But from my own experience, I think I'm on the right track with this. I'm happy to stick the resistor in there. This is not a power circuit yet. The pin it's going to is actually the data in and out on the ROM chip, on the EEPROM. So there can't be any appreciable amount of current flowing through it here. So that's another good reason why I'm happy to stick this value of resistor in there. Let's see if this is physically the right size. It looks like it is. Yeah. Okay. So let's solder this back on. I'm going to do it under the optical microscope. It's just much easier for me. I'll even be so bold as to say this, if I'd done the job this way in the first place, I probably wouldn't even have had this problem. Okay, so there's the resistor. Just stuck on the end of my tweezers. Where it seems it wants to stay. Well, it wants to stay there so much it can stay there. Okay. Bit of flux. I'll put a little bit of solder on one pad. That one. Okay. Again, you'll see I'm using the BC3 tip. This is my favourite tip. For just about anything, to be honest. Stick this into the flux. It should stay there with a bit of up there. Okay. It has. Now, I'm going to get the resistor with my tweezers in the left hand and just stick it onto that pad. Okay, so that's where the pad is. Clean the end of the iron. Okay, that's good. I'm pretty sure that's got that. We can just push down it a little bit. 
it is flat now and then solder the other end easiest way for me to do this is to turn it around okay get a little bit of solder on the tip because there's no solder on this side I only put a little spot on the other side and then we'll again come in with the tweezers okay there I can check that's okay by measuring from pin 3 to this point and I should see 22 ohms okay here is pin 3 then and it goes to pin 1 on here yeah, 22 and a half ohms okay let's see if that makes any difference I'll try this without any RAM first, see if we can get any bleeps out of it, okay? I've put the little post analyzer in there in the TPM header so we can see. Yep, it's the right way round. Okay. So this was stuck on zero before it wouldn't move. So power on and let's try and start it. Ah! Well looks like it's asking for some RAM okay I've put some RAM in there I'll connect the monitor as well I've connected the capture card I've put the RAM in let's see well now it's going back to flashing the CPU LED again okay Let's run back out, we'll take one strip out. Okay. Started by itself that time. This is on zero now. In fact, it shut down. Ah, oh, so it's changed. Ah, now it's booting. Yeah, we have a picture I'll show you guys. Okay, you can see it there. So this isn't actually displaying anything, but with one RAM in, this is actually booting up. Okay, let's try two again. Mhm. Mm yeah, it's running. It's, it's seeing dual channel RAM as well. I can see it there, just behind the instruments camera. Yeah, there you go, guys. So that is actually now booting up. Okay, seeing both strips of RAM, dual channel. And that's correct, 8192, because they're two four gig strips. So I'm going to give this back to my friend now and tell him to get himself some RAM. I'll try his again, but his RAM wouldn't work in my motherboard, but we can see. Okay. So this is his strip of RAM. A single strip goes in this slot, so that's the correct one. Let's try this. Yeah, it's going to boot. Oh, that's interesting because that RAM would not work in my motherboard. That's a single 8 gig strip. Okay, so this is running to the point now I can actually give it back to my friend. This is not a customer's job as such, so he can do some of the work himself. He's quite capable of doing that, but now his motherboard is running. So that was a team effort, guys. I got as far as I could with it. I was definitely on the right track. I cocked up it happens yeah but the beauty of running the channel is that basically like a thousand sets of eyes are better than one yeah so well done to you guys who actually found where the problem was with that one and i'm very happy to see it working just to show what should happen when it boots up correctly the lights go to the last one in the sequence and that just stays lit up like that that led actually says boot bytes that's what you would expect Okay, very short video, but I hope you enjoyed that one, and I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.